Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this gas monkey. Monkey? One of my favourite TV shows. And the idea is to route it all out. Now you could leave it on this piece of rough fencing wood. Just spend five minutes just to smooth it down. It comes up really nice. Obviously when you buy it, it's rough looking like that. But a couple of minutes down the line with a belt sander or something, it does stand up really nice. Now the idea is to route it out, all the black section, we remove all that, leaving the face slightly raised up, be two or three millimetres. Then obviously we'll paint it black, sand it down, put some linseed oil on, and we're heading towards the finishing line. Also on this one, you could leave it on that piece of wood, like I've just said, cut it off top and bottom. I'm just going to try and go around it with a scroll saw and basically cut out the face itself. That's just a personal thing for me. And this will end up on the shed with all the other little projects. As always for me, you've printed off your template. Now I prefer to use carbon paper, literally just slot it underneath like so, and draw around this with a pen to transfer the image onto your wood. Now if you're really clever, I have seen other people that can basically just stick that straight to the wood and route over the top and then sand all the paper off, peel it off afterwards. I tried it once, it's not for me. So I simply just draw it on like so, plus you can use that template over and over again. And there's our image today that we hopefully are going to route out. Now the bits we're going to need, as always for me, I like to use these CNC bits. They do have a small shaft on them, 3.175mm, the same size as the Dremel. So they will fit in a Dremel, no problem, if you want to use one of those router attachments for your Dremel. However, for the router, you will need an adapter collet, 6.35mm, and it's basically just a tube like that, which is obviously quarter inch, or 635 and the idea is you literally just slot your CNC bit in. These are nice and sharp. 15 degree we're using today. I normally use a 20 and a 30. But there are some small areas in here. So we're going to go for a 15. And literally just slot that into there. Into the silver end. Now that will fit your router no problem. We'll go around all the lines. Because this is quite small in areas. Like down here. We'll literally just remove all that with the CNC bit. Around the teeth. And maybe around the eyes so most of this will be done with this these larger areas that we've got to remove we will pop in one of the end milling bits that i like to use these have the same size shaft as your cnc bits 3.175 millimeter and we'll find one that we can just fit into these smaller gaps and that literally replaces obviously your cnc bit slide that in the same way like so and you're good to go that's actually an older one, you can see from that, there's no barrier on it now. All the new ones come with these little barriers on. I did try to remove those, but they're meant to, meant to stay on there. Just so when you push it into your adapter collet, you push it right up to that barrier, and that's good to go. We'll set that to the same depth as the CNC bits, and basically remove the rest of the black. Now finding your depth is a personal choice. I have a little piece of scrap wood to one side with plenty of little depths on and we basically find one that we're happy with and we'll set it to that one and start routing this one out. It measures 8 inches by 6 inches so we'll route this out and then we'll get to the scroll saw and let's just cut it out before we start painting it. Okay that's enough talking let's start routing this one out.
Right, you can see from that we've gone all around all our lines with the CNC bit. No problem, everything's still intact. It's a good three millimeters deep, this one, so even though they're quite small pieces, it's chunky enough to stay in place. Because remember, we're gonna have to sand over this, and anything really fragile, like little bits like these here, they will quite easily pop off. So give yourself a bit of thickness just to give a bit more chance of stopping in place. You notice here I did a couple of little test runs on there as well as a piece of scrap of wood to one side. And I went for the third one. So that's the depth we're going to set our end milling bit in. Want a nice small one, remember. These come in packs of 10. They're ideal because they clear out the bottom, should I say, of the wood as well as the sides. So they have a little rough base on them. So even though it's not a perfect finish, just leave you quite a smooth bottom on there if you know what I mean so obviously now we're going to remove all the darker section ideally this would have been cut out first and I've done it on other projects where we cut it out first because obviously you've got a better line to follow with a pencil line and then I leave it in this framework and then route over the top to remove the remainder however I'm just going to chance it on this one because it is quite rough and ready around the edges we don't have to be too perfect if one it stands up iron another it doesn't really matter so we're actually going to route it all out as if it's a finished project and then we're going to scroll it out afterward it makes it a little bit harder obviously it's easier to find to follow a pencil line than it is to follow two different depths because remember this bit will be routed out this bit will still be normal but it's no problem these things are sent to testers out so like I said before, we'll literally just remove the CNC bit. That's a 15 degree on that one. It's basically like a pinhead. Gives you a nice straight cut down. There's no degrees on it really. Well, it says 15, but I can't really see it. So we slot that out there. Then we slot a nice small end milling bit in. Onto that little barrier, remember. We'll set it to that depth that we decided there. Or obviously any of these. And we're just going to remove the rest of this monkey's face now. Okay, we'll do that next. Right, we've made it all the way around with our end milling bits. Everything's still intact. So that's a good sign. We've not lost anything yet. Now, remember, I'm going to cut this out with a scroll saw. Literally go around the edge in there against the routed out bit and the higher bit. So it's a little bit more difficult. Should have probably done it beforehand, but it doesn't really matter, does it? They're only fun little projects. So for that, the scroll saw, we're going to need, obviously, a blade to go in. Now, there's three different basic blades, if I'll just show you quickly. Your standard blade on your cheaper saws is what they call a pin blade. Obviously, because it's got a pin at both edge, uh, ends, should I say. When you place the blade in your saw, you want the teeth facing towards you. And you want it to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way, you know you've got your blade in. These are okay. This would work on this little project, no problem whatsoever. If you're going to do a lot of intricate cuts on the inside where you have to draw, uh, drill a small pilot hole, those pins are going to be in the way. So then you would move on to a, 
pinless blade. Obviously, no pins on the end, as you can see. It's very fine work, absolutely fantastic. They're ideal for intricate work where you've got to get a lot of small holes to feed the blade through. They're on your more expensive saws. They have clamps at top and bottom. I like to use the spiral blade. It's another one again. It's basically just spiraled all the way around, like so. The good thing about spiral blades, they cut in any direction. So there's no turning of the wood, basically. You can cut it left, right, up, down. Whereas these other two blades, the teeth are facing towards you, and you would have to feed your wood in, and then turn it, and feed it, and turn it. Whereas with a spiral blade, you can literally just go like that. So it's finding the one that you're happy with. I just prefer the spiral blade. And unfortunately, with my little dropper, I use these adapter clamps at either end, just so that it clips on to the saw, no problem. Okay, we'll set this up and we'll just cut this one out. Right, we've made it all the way around with the scroll saw. That cuts out really nice on spiral blades. You'll either love or hate them, and they're not for everybody. But once you get used to them, I've certainly got no problems. And they cut fine enough for me, as you can see from that. Okay, it's still rough and ready at the moment. So we're just going to tidy it up. As always for me, I like to use the flexi cable on a Dremel with these cheap engraving bits. They come in different sizes, different shapes, plenty to play with. You can see from there. So plenty to go up. And we're just going to use one of these and let you go around and tidy this up a little bit. Go around there, clean it up. And then we'll put some kind of little grooves in there. Just get a little bit more shape. It's not a carving project at the end of the day. And then we'll put a, a slit in the back just for hanging purposes. We'll do that quickly at the next stage, and then we'll get on to painting it and sanding it off. Okay, let's give it a little bit of tidy up now. Right, that's enough tidying up for me. Now it's not perfect, and we don't want it too smooth. It is meant to be fur at the end of the day. And we've put some little bit of shaping around the edges here and just rounded it off slightly. While we're on, we've put a slit in the back just for hanging purposes. These are called T slot bits. This is a 516th, this one, I believe. And you just simply just set it in your router, set it to the depth you want, lower it into there. Slide it across, slide it back out, lift it out, and that leaves you a nice slit there. But you put your screw in and you can angle that up wherever you want to, no problem whatsoever. I use it all the time in all my projects now. That way you have no screws or nails showing at the front of the project. Okay, painting wise now, we're just going to paint this black. Just put it on, no sanding sealer or anything. I like to use painters touch paints on all my outside projects. We'll paint it all, all the sides. And then we'll come back, sand off this top piece with a little mouse sander, just to expose that bare wood again. And then we'll put some linseed oil on, just to darken it down a little bit, make it look a bit more a natural colour, should I say. And then we'll spray it with some clear sealant, just give it a nice shine, and this little project will be finished. So I'll go away and put some paint on, and then we'll come back when it's sanding time and spray time for the seal.
right, that's it. This little project is finished. So just quickly to recap, remember we've routed it out, we painted the black paint on, we sanded it off, then we put the boiled linseed oil on just to darken that wood down as you can see from that. And then we sprayed on crystal clear. It's one of my favourites. I use it on a lot of my projects. Just to add a bit of protection and just gives it a nice shine. Another one I've been using is the Yacht Varnish. That's also a nice one to use. And there we have it. This little project is finished. So you can see from that it's got a nice shine to it. Remember, it's just cheap fencing wood. So you're only going to get basically what you pay for. If you've got nicer woods, you'll obviously get a nicer finish and stuff. But I'm happy with these ones. They just go on the side of my shed. Just fun little projects that basically anybody can do these. There's no skill involved. I don't think so personally. As long as you can follow a line with a router, you can make these all day long no problem whatsoever basically just take your time and enjoy what you're doing now i'm not going to win any master carving awards and i certainly don't do these for the awards they're just fun projects that i like to do and basically share what little bits i've learnt along the way to encourage anybody else to do the router scroll saw resin carving any of those little projects so there we have it. This one is done. So it's a Gas Monkey TV series logo. It measures in at 8 inches by 6 inches. Nice routed out project on scrap fencing wood we're going to call it. And that's it. This one is done. So we're going to pop him on the shed with the rest of them. Okay then. Thank you very much for watching.